Uh, problem number five for the test two review. So we're gonna finish it up today. Uh, we're gonna do a 100 kilogram running back uh, moving at five meters per second to the right. The running back is a position in American football where uh, they're uh, kind of big, but they're not the biggest guy. So they have the football in their hand and they're running and they have five meters per second to the right. They get tackled by 140 kilogram linemen. Linemen are bigger guys and they weigh more. And uh, they are, he's moving at three meters per second to the left. What is their combined speed and direction after the collision and the percent loss of kinetic energy? First, we're assuming that the collision is perfectly inelastic. So they're gonna collide, combine, and then move together, right? So then it says, what is their velocity if they experience a perfectly elastic collision? Okay, so imagine this guy here, uh, 100 kilogram, running at five meters per second. This guy, bigger, 140, running at uh, three meters per second. Well, who do you think is gonna win? Well, depends on their momentum, right? What's the momentum of this guy? Momentum initial <coughs> of this guy, is going to be 100 times, uh, it's mv, so uh, 100 times uh, 5, so it's 500 kilogram meters per second. What's the momentum initial of the lineman? We can say that's a positive momentum because it's to the right. And then what's the momentum initial, we can say momentum initial number 1, Momentum initial number two, MV initial two, MV initial one. We can say M1, M2. So uh, the more exact you are with your symbols, the better that is. M2, M1, M initial one, M initial two. So this one, the alignment is 140. Their velocity is to the left, so it's negative three. So negative three times 140, that's negative 420. So believe it or not, who's winning? The running back is still winning. He's got, he's got more momentum, he's going faster, right? So what's the net momentum before the collision? The net momentum of the system, okay? So let me erase a little bit of this. The net momentum, P total initial, must be equal to P total final. Uh, the law of uh, the conservation of momentum says that the total momentum of a system is conserved uh, before and after the collision, right? So um, 500 minus 420. What's the total momentum after the collision? Well, if they connect and they stick together, right? So what's gonna happen? Together, their combined mass, this is a totally inelastic collision, right? Their combined mass is what? 100 and 140, that's uh, 240. Which way is they, are they gonna be moving? They're still gonna be moving to the right. Why? Because the momentum of the running back was positive, it's bigger number than the momentum of the lineman, negative 420, right? So it's gonna be 240, and then what's gonna be their final velocity? We don't know. Right? So what is this now? 80 divided by 240, V final, V final is equal to what? Well, that's one third, 0.3333 meters per second, right? <coughs> so let's see. Um, and that was the answer on the answer sheet, right? So 0.333. Repeating increase. Now, what's the percent loss of their energy? Where is that energy going? Well, it's going to heat, sound, br uh, breaking their bones, and all of that kind of stuff, right? The, their kinetic energy is lost. So what's going to happen here? What's the percent loss of kinetic energy? So what's the initial kinetic energy of the system? One half times the mass of the running back times his velocity squared 
plus one half times the mass of the alignment times this velocity squared. Right? So what is that equal to? That's equal to this one is gonna be fifty times twenty-five plus seventy times nine. Right? So the initial kinetic energy is 1,880 joules. <coughs> What's the final kinetic energy? The final kinetic energy, one half times, their total mass was 240 times one third squared, right? Why one third? The final velocity is one third, right? That's the final kinetic energy of the system. So that's gonna be 120 Right? Divided by 9. 13. 13.3333, so on, joules. Wow, their kinetic energy is completely lost and gone into other sources of energy, right? So what's the percent loss? Eighteen eighty minus 13.3333 over 1880, okay? That's quite a lot, a big percent, 99.3 percent, right? 99.29 uh, percent to be more exact. 99.29 percent loss of kinetic energy. Now, if we tweak their velocities, we could have just made it so that they come collide and they stand still. Their kinetic energy is 100 percent lost, right? So that kind of collision is the worst because basically it's a head-on collision there where their momentums are equal to each other, right? Um, now, what happens if this collision is elastic? So that would be something like they collide and then they sort of bounce off each other and they don't get stuck, right? So what's going to happen then is that they're both their momentum and their uh, kinetic energy must be conserved, right? So what's going to happen is we're going to do something like this. We're going to say, you might just treat it like a block system now. Uh, 100 by 143. And then after the collision, 100 times V1, 140 times V2. And they have their own separate velocities after the collision, right? So what's going to happen then? Well, I already know what their initial momentum was, right? Wasn't it 80? Uh, 500 minus 420. So if their original momentum is 80, what's their final momentum? 100 V1 plus uh, 140 V2. And then I could get rid of the zero here. And then the zero here. So make it 8 is 10 V1 plus 14 V2. Now, I also know that the original kinetic energy is 1880, right? So 1880 must equal to what? Well, it must equal to the final kinetic energy of each of them added up, right? One half, 100 V1 squared plus one and a half, 140 V2 squared. Okay, again, you can simplify this. 1880 equals to 50 V1 squared plus 70 V2 squared. Get rid of the zero, get rid of the zero, get rid of the zero, okay? So you basically have an equation here, 1880 is 5v1 squared plus 7v2 squared, and then you have this one. We could perhaps simplify this even more, divide everything by 2. We have, uh, we have uh, 4 is equal to 5v1 plus 7v2. Simplify that. Then we're going to do a uh, substitution. Okay. So we're going to take this substitute for one of them. 4 minus 5v1 divided by 7 is equal to v2, right? 4 minus 5v1 over 7. Take that and put it into this v2.
The rest of this becomes sort of algebra, you know. So then what you have is you have 18, uh, 188. Uh, we can square this out. That's going to be uh, six, uh, 16 minus, remember, the form of uh, a minus b squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So double their product plus the last one squared. So 4 squared is 16 minus their product is 20. So double that is 40. Okay. And then V1 squared is equal to what? That's going to be 25 V1 squared. Don't forget that the 7 is squared here. So it's going to be 49. And then this 7 cancels with one of the four, uh, 49s here. That makes that what? Just a 7. Well, last thing we can do, multiply everything by 7. 7 times 5, it's going to give you 35. Then you will get rid of the 7 here. 7 times 1880, what is that? Uh, 7 times 188, I meant. 1316. Okay, so this becomes 1316. Now what's left over? Well, I can combine this with this. So I have 0 equals 35 plus 25 is 60. V1 squared. Negative 40 V1. 16 minus 13 16. This one goes over here, becomes a negative, right? 16 minus 13 16, that's negative uh, 1300, right? Again, get rid of the zero, get rid of the zero, get rid of the zero. <clears throat> then uh, find the answer to this, okay? Now, if you have done this right, what should happen is you should get two answers. One of those answers should equal to the original velocity of V1, okay? Well, original velocity of V1, the running back was five, right? So one of your answers should be equal to uh, five. So you have zero is equal to, so this should actually be factorable, V1 minus five. I know one of them should be equal to that. What should the other one be? What should this be so that this works out? Well, this needs to be six V1, so that you get six V1 squared. And then over here, what does this needs to be? You need a plus. What do I need here so that the product of them gives you 130, right? Well, 5 times what is 130? Well, divide 5 into 130, that gives you what? Uh, 20 uh, with uh, 30 left over, 26. So it needs to be 26, right? So 26 times 5, that will be 130. But now what I need to check is if the middle, middle one is working out, right? 26 V1 minus 30, right? So if I multiply this by this and this by this, so 26 V1 negative, six times five is 30 V1. What is that equal to? Negative four V1, negative four V1. There you have it. So the middle one works out. So one of the answers is equal to its original velocity, right? So V1 is equal to five meters per second. And uh, therefore, uh, the other answer is what? Negative 26 over six, because you're gonna set this equal to zero. So what is that gonna equal? Negative 4.33, right? <coughs> now, how did I know this, that the original velocity, one of the answers is going to equal to the original velocity? Well, visualize this for a second with me. If you have uh, an object coming like this, uh, 100 coming at 5, and then another object, 140, coming at 3, right? And if we want them to collide in such a way that they conserve both their linear momentum and both their kinetic energy, what's one of the ways that they can conserve both of those. Well, they can conserve it if the collision never took place. They were on different lanes, 
right? So two objects come, just pass by each other. If they pass by each other, the collision never took place. If the collision never took place, then that means they conserve their kinetic energy, right? So what was the original V1, the initial? Five meters per second. So if they pass by each other, the initial V1 should be five. One of your answers should be five because then you conserve kinetic energy and momentum, right? But the answer we're interested in is if they hit, hit, uh, hit each other and bounce back, so this guy bounces back, this guy bounces this way. So the velocity of this, we just found out, this is the one we're interested in. 4.33, that means it bounced back. So the running back hits the lineman, the running back is gonna bounce back at 4.33 meters per second. What's gonna happen to the lineman? Well, we have to put the V1 into the equation of V2, right? What was the equation for V2? Well, I have the equation here erased, but even if I uh, want to um, uh, make it up again, how, wh where did we get that equation? Well, we said the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum, right? So AD <coughs> is equal to 100 V1 plus 140 V2. So that's where we got the equation for the V2, right? In terms of the V1. So we got rid of the zero, we got rid of the zero. So I can take my uh, V1 now, and I can put it here, negative 4.3333. And then that will help me solve for V2, right? What is the V2 equal to? So you're going to see here, this is negative 43 goes over there. So 8 plus uh, 43.3333 divided by 14, what is that equal to? 3.666, uh, that's equal to V2. So uh, the final velocity of the line one is 3.666 and then repeating sixes. So one of them would round up to seven meters per second. So what happened? The lineman came in at three, the running back came in at five, the running back bounced back at 4.33, the lineman bounced back at 3.667 meters per second. And basically what's gonna to happen to the elastic collision problem. Okay, thank you.